Ferrari is entering a new era. Soon we'll see an SUV join the lineup, and by 2025 we'll see the first fully electric Ferrari. But the brand's not turning its back on internal combustion engine sports cars just yet because we have this, the 296 GTB. Now, it's not replacing the F8 Tributo in the range. Instead, it takes lessons learned from the SF90 Stradale and the LaFerrari hybrids before it, and it condenses that down and packs an 819 brake horsepower punch into one of the most compact packages we've ever seen roll out of the gates of Maranello. And it does that through a lot of new technology. The 296 GTB features an all new three litre twin turbo V6. The first V6 from Ferrari, it says, because it doesn't consider the Dino a Ferrari. It's paired with an electric motor between the engine and its eight-speed dual-clutch automatic transmission. And the new engine is the first with a hot V configuration from Ferrari, with the wide 120-degree angle between its cylinder banks, giving more space to mount the turbos there. But just as much as the technical side, the brand has concentrated on the emotional side with the car's styling and sound. It's another evolutionary step on from the SF90 in design terms. And at the front here, Ferrari's come over all British and fitted a device it calls the T-Tray. Now that's basically a front splitter that channels air under the car to help improve aerodynamic performance and cool that new engine. Now there are more aerodynamic aids, including these ducts integrated into the headlights that cool the brakes. And if you come round the side, you'll see that the car has a very clean profile but it's when you get back to these rear wings where the car's design is really anchored, according to design boss Flavio Manzoni. Now, it evokes memories and shapes of the Ferrari 250 LM from the 1960s, and that's the same with this air bridge on the roof here. The air bridge acts like a virtual rear screen and channels air to the active aerodynamic spoiler at the rear here. That improves downforce. Now at the back you can see these modern tail lights. They're like we've seen on the Roma and the SF90 and it basically gives the 296 GTB a very clean, sharp look. Now of course, when you turn the 296 GTB on, it defaults to E-Drive mode. So, when you set off, the car actually is very quiet. You get a little bit of motor whine and a little bit of road noise. You can hear the stones pinking up and hitting the car underneath, but otherwise it's quite refined. In e-drive mode, the performance is really quite strong actually. It's got that lovely kind of sharp response that you get from the top of the throttle pedal. There's something that we've been used to with Ferraris. And with 310 newton meters of torque, well, performance is pretty good. It would give maybe a warm hatchback a run for its money. Of course, cycle through the modes and you get to hybrids. Now this basically manages the two power sources intelligently and will switch between them. But to awaken that engine, you've got to toggle through to performance. Now you can then hear the engine fire up and what a noise it is. So we've already talked about the fact that the cylinder banks are separated by 120 degrees. Well, the crankshaft's pins are also separated by 120 degrees. And according to Ferrari's engineers, this gives a really nice regular firing order. And a welcome side effect of that is, well, it sounds like one of Ferrari's naturally aspirated V12s. It sounds glorious. In fact, Ferrari's engineers, they've nicknamed this engine Piccolo V12. Now, excuse me for my pronunciation, but translated, that basically means small V12. And as you can hear, it really sounds the part. Of course, once both power sources are working, the performance is just astonishing. I'm gonna cycle through up to qualifying mode now, which gives us the maximum hit. So the full 819 brake horsepower. It primes the hybrid system for full deployment. So you have everything and my goodness me, my mind is blown by the performance that this car can deliver. 0 to 62 miles per hour comes up in 2.9 seconds, but while the stats are so impressive, it's not the biggest thing that grabs you about the car. It's just how easy to exploit the performance it actually is. Now, a lot of that comes down to the rear axle the traction control, the stability control, all of the systems that Ferrari's got going on here, 
they're immense. You know, you can just deploy everything coming out of a corner and the chassis systems will take over. But the rear stability has also helped the front. So Raffaele Di Simone, Ferrari's test driver, told me that the 296 GTB's steering ratio is actually the same as other mid-engine Ferrari Berlinettas. So despite the fact that the wheelbase has been shortened, it's 2.6 metres for the 296, they've kept that same ratio and it means it feels super agile and super alert. The steering maybe doesn't have quite the same level of feedback as you might get in a McLaren, but you know, this is Ferrari's philosophy and we've come to expect those two differences between those two brands. What it does have is a really nice rate of response and a really direct feel. So, what about all of the other things that a sports car needs to do? Well, the 296 GTB, well the ride is firm, but then this is a sports car, so you kind of expect that. There is bumpy road mode, of course, to kind of soften the dampers off a little bit and give you a little bit more relaxation when you're not kind of in twisty, turny corners or a track. But the really nice thing about it is everything underneath it feels so rigidly located that you'd get such a great connection to the chassis and straight away it gives you massive confidence to really use all that power and throw this car into corners and lean on the chassis, lean on the grip and chase the throttle out the other side as well and it's just such a rewarding experience. Now Ferrari says that this car has been uh, engineered around a fun to drive feel and, and that does sound like kind of marketing bump and I was a bit unsure about that to begin with but you know 10 20 miles in this car and straight away you realize that the driver has been put at the heart of this experience that the power and the chassis they combine to deliver something that is kind of unquantifiable that the human brain just puts down as fun and you want more and more of it more and more of that engine just listen to it you want more and more grip and to just push the car harder and harder and ultimately on the road it's an exercise in self-restraint because well the 296 GTB is fantastic. Dropping back into e-mode and cruising along gently gives you a chance to appreciate the interior which is a sizable step on from the F8 thanks to tech from the SF90 and the Roma. The big digital dash shows plenty of info and is sharp and clear even if some of the touch sensitive controls still take a little getting used to. But the overall design, the materials and the finish feel every inch the match for its £241,550 price tag. But then the Ferrari is pretty much without rival, and even at this price it might actually be good value. The McLaren Artura is closest to it in concept, but at 671 brake horsepower it's some way down on performance. Crikey, this thing is fast. It has so much torque in the mid-range that you can be a gear higher everywhere than you would be in a normal combustion engine sports car and it's still got the performance, that solid mid-range. The gearbox is fantastic. It's an eight-speed dual-clutch automatic similar to the SF90 Stradale and the shifts are just really crisp on the way up and sweetly blipped on the way down. The stability that you have going into braking zones is fantastic. And that brings me on to something else that Ferrari has developed with this car. It's called ABS Evo and basically what it lets you do is really brake late going into corners on the track without triggering the ABS so you get that same sense of feedback from the chassis. The steering isn't corrupted and you don't actually lose braking performance so it just again, it's, it's putting the driver right at the heart of the process. Overall, the 296 GTB is a triumph. How such a powerful, compact car can be so much fun and so easy to drive really is impressive. Ferrari has done it again. It's embracing electrification and using it to make its cars faster, but also more fun and more accessible. Even if we will miss the noise in time, 
that really bodes well for a fully electric future.